skimming over the so nice prairie dog village right up ahead, about a mile up. But uh, in a way, this has a, like a practical... Very practical. Yeah, we very use it for search and rescue here in the state of New Mexico. Okay. And actually, we're starting to train some teams from uh, getting some our techniques straight so we can train some teams from Arizona and California okay. to do the same thing. And these, with the full view that we have and the slow speeds and the way we can control these machines, yeah. they make it very practical for, uh, for search and rescue purposes. Uh, not very helpful in the mountains, but out here and over vast stretches, uh, you can find pretty much anything. We've also used them for rounding up cattle, the landowner just to our north. Uh, has, uh, he has heads and, and we move, we move their, their herds. Last spring it was kind of wet and he had a lot of seedlings were starting. And he didn't want to, he wanted to round up the cattle and move them uh, further north. But he didn't want to go, yeah, tear up the area, he want, you know, so, and they use horses or ATV, so. He asked us to do it, and we were about, I guess, nine of us went up and rounded up the herd and drove them about five miles north through the north gate, about 45 minutes. And since then, we've also did it for another rancher. We were spotting cattle for him that he hadn't seen and was wondering where they were. In about a half hour, we'd spot about 30 head. Wow. So uh, that he didn't, uh, he didn't know where they were. So uh, and then the next day, we, we drove them toward the road, and uh, uh, some uh, ranch hands uh, drove them along the road to uh, back to the, to the, to the pens. But it was it, it's really uh, practical for that those kind of purposes. Okay. okay. How long how long can you fly generally with uh, like uh, the fuel supply? Well, you can fly an hour and a half without uh, without really stretching things. Uh, we've gone on some cross countries from here to 19th Street and Rio Ranch. It's about right. 25 miles. Right. Uh, we've gone further about 35 miles. I think is the furthest. Well, but they're not really cross country machines. It's kind of like a yeah. a real fast jog, you know. Right. But right. Uh, right. but for low and slow and just sitting yeah. in a chair and flying around yeah. low and it's a what lot of fun. Of, what kind of speed do you get? About 25 miles an hour. That's the speed of the wing. Okay. And if we go faster than that, we tend to climb and we, we yeah. shut the engine off or okay. reduce the throttle, we come down. Okay. And then for landing, I don't know if you saw some of the landings, okay. uh, we just flare the wings, take the energy out of the wing, and just just like stepping okay. off a, cool. Cool. Step off a cool. chair. Uh, now, now, you're a teacher and... Uh, I te teach at the uh, Rio Rancho Mid-High. I teach 8th grade science. Okay. Uh, you indicated after you retire, you might want to get into the sport even more. Or? Yeah, I think so. I've uh, recently qualified as a flight instructor. I went out to Arizona and got yeah. uh, certified out there. Uh, yeah, so we might get into teaching, uh, teaching, being an instructor. I also write for Ultra Flight Magazine. Uh, I've written uh, some product reviews and site reviews, and so I'd like to do a little bit more of that. Is that a publication you can buy at newsstand? Uh, probably you? not. It's, you yeah. can get it online at Ultraflight, uh, ultraflightmagazine.com, or I guess use the search engine to find it. Okay. And then it's a subscription. Okay, cool. The national organization for, for all of this is uh, USPPA, which is, uh, I'm sorry, USPPG.org. <laughs> okay. And uh, okay. you can look that up, and it's a useful resource if you want to get into it. It lists all the schools and instructors. Okay.